Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Haley with Haley Stitches and today I'm gonna to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial for how to make a quilt out of just one charm pack. This is a great beginner pattern. If you're brand new to quilting, I highly recommend it. Or if you're a more experienced quilter, this is one you can easily make in an afternoon. To get a copy of the completely free pattern featured in today's video, click the link in the description below, enter your email address, and I'll send it directly to your inbox. And if you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up so other quilters can find it too. Let's get started. Before we get started, let's go through the supplies we'll need for today's quilt. You'll need one charm pack, three yards of background fabric, a cutting mat, a rotary cutter, and a long ruler. The size of ruler I'm using is six by 24. You'll also need some pins and matching thread. Sometimes it can be hard to choose thread when you're working with a charm pack, but I always default to gray because it seems to go with everything. The color I'm using is called Dove and the brand is Aurifil. I am also gonna use these alpha bitties to help me label my pieces and some clover clips to clip them onto my fabric. All of the supplies I'm using today will be linked in the description below. First, we're going to cut our background fabric. So to do that, we want to grab both edges of the fabric and line them up together. These edges are called the selvages. So we want to line it up selvage to selvage. And you know it's the selvage because it has a little bit of a different texture and depending on the fabric you're using, it may even be a different color. So we're going to set this down on our mat and smooth it all out so we get really accurate cuts. And if you see any black hair on my fabric, just ignore it. I love to use white background fabric, but that's not always the best choice when I have three black animals. And if you're a pet owner, you know that a lint roller is a must have item in your quilting room. So after it's all smoothed out, we're going to grab our long ruler and line it up. And we just want to cut a little bit off to give us a nice 90 degree angle. And we are going to start off by cutting some five inch strips. So I'm lining up everything with my ruler here, as you can see, using the lines on the bottom and the side. And I'm going to make a big, long five inch strip. And I'm just going to repeat this process until we have a total of 10 five inch strips. And my rotary blade is a little bit dull, so you can see me kind of working back and forth to get a nice cut. Uh, replace your blades, people. <laughs> it makes it so much easier. So I ran out of fabric, so what I'm going to do is just repeat the process. I'm going to shift everything over, line it up, trim the edge, and then continue cutting my 5-inch strips until I have that total of 10 5-inch strips that I need. Now I'm done cutting my five inch strips, so I'm just going to set my yardage aside for now until we come back to it a little bit later. And right now you should have 10 five inch strips of fabric. I'm going to get started trimming these into 24 five inch squares. So I'm going to do this is line everything up on the mat and then I'm going to trim off the selvage so that I don't have that part in my quilt. Each five inch strip of fabric is going to yield eight five inch squares. So I am going to repeat this process two more times to get all of the five inch squares that we need for this quilt. Next, we're going to cut eight nine and a half inch rectangles. So to do this process, I'm actually gonna turn my ruler on its side so I can get that nine and a half inch measurement. And I'm going to keep the fabric doubled over again just to make this a little bit faster. So for one five inch strip of fabric, you can get four nine and a half inch rectangles. And then that extra bit of fabric on the edge can be scrap fabric added to your stash or you can toss it if that's too small of a piece that you like to work with. So at this point, we should have a total of 24 five inch squares and eight nine and a half inch rectangles. With the rest of our five inch strips, we're going to cut a total of 15 14 inch rectangles. So you can yield three rectangles from one strip and is exactly 42 inches. So just be a little cautious when you're cutting. I recommend just trying one strip first just to make sure that you have enough. Um, otherwise you might have to add a little bit extra background fabric in there so that you can get your cut. So I have it doubled over again. So here's my two 14 inch rectangles. And then this extra piece I'm going to open up should be exactly 14 inches, but mine is a little bit off. So I'm just gonna trim off that extra sliver so that I have a nice accurate 14 inch rectangle. Repeat that process till you have all of the 14 inch rectangles that you need for this pattern. 
After cutting all of your five inch strips, you should have a total of 24 five inch squares, eight nine and a half inch rectangles, and 15 14 inch rectangles. Next, we are going to cut four 14 inch strips out of the rest of our background fabric. So again, we're going to smooth this all out, get it squared up on our cutting mat, and cut off that little edge just to give us a nice 90 degree angle to work with. And you will see my ruler is only six inches wide and we're cutting a 14 inch wide strip. So that's not gonna work so easily. So what you could do is turn your ruler this way, but then you have to constantly keep moving it up and adjusting and it's really easy to get an inaccurate cut this way. The other option of course is just to have a really big ruler, which I know not all of us have the money to invest in. So I will show you what I do in order to get these big cuts. What I like to do is actually use my cutting mat in order to see where I'm cutting. So it is important before you ever use your cutting mat as a ruler to measure it with your ruler just to make sure it's accurate. I have seen some people have cutting mats that aren't accurate. So all you have to do to do that is just line up your ruler with your cutting mat and make sure it's correct. And mine works out just fine when I do this. So I am using the lines on my mat, the 14 inch lines to line up the top and bottom of my long ruler to get those nice big cuts. So we want to get a total of four 14 inch strips and feel free to use this method or whatever method works for you to get those long chunky strips. So now that we have our 14 inch strips, we're just going to trim off that selvage and we are going to cut these strips into 34 and a quarter inch rectangles. So once again, I'm using the lines on my cutting mat to get that measurement. And if you're a little worried about it, you can be flexible and just add that extra inch instead of a quarter of an inch. It's your quilt and you can cut it however you need to to get it to be as accurate as you want it to be. And then with the remainder of this fabric here, I am going to cut one five inch rectangle. So we are going to repeat that process three more times and we will get a total of four 34 and a quarter inch rectangles and three five inch rectangles. This is what your fabric should look like at the end. And this background fabric will be labeled as fabric B in the pattern. So moving on to our fabric A for this pattern, otherwise known as your charm pack fabric, we will need a total of 41 five inch squares. And as we know, most charm packs are sold in packs of 42. So you just have to pick one to get rid of. So I decided to get rid of a duplicate fabric and a really light fabric because I don't want it to really blend into the, my background. A trick I like to do is lay everything out and take a picture of it. So here's my really professional picture. But if you turn it black and white, you can see the volumes of the print and you can see it's really distributed quite well. So there's a big mix of dark, medium, and light prints. You know, it's not perfect, but I'm happy with the distribution. And if you try to make it perfect, you really could be sitting there for a long time. So as I'm assembling my quilt, I'm just referring back to that picture. So I know which fabrics go where. Now we can start assembling our fabric. So we're going to sew one 14 inch fabric B rectangle to one of our fabric A five inch squares. And for this entire quilt, we're gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. And for this piece, we're going to press it to the right. I do have pressing instructions in the quilts. You'll make a total of nine of these units. And the next step, you wanna take three of the units and sew them together in a long line. So I am just taking two pieces at a time, bringing it to my machine with that quarter inch seam allowance. And again, I'm gonna sew that last piece on with my quarter inch seam allowance and get everything assembled and I'm gonna press everything to the right. And the last step for this section is to sew another five inch by 14 inch fabric B rectangle to the edge of the quilt. You'll end up with a total of three of these section A rows. And to keep everything organized, I am laying it all out, making sure that what is on top will be the top of my quilt. And I'm also gonna use these alphabetes to label 
my section A rows, it's really easy to get everything mixed up, especially when you're doing rows and rows and rows like this. So just try to be mindful of where your fabric is. And I do highly recommend taking that picture of how you want your fabric to be laid out so that you can refer back to it and see what rows go where. Now we're gonna assemble our section B row. So we're gonna take one fabric A five inch square and one fabric B five inch square and sew them together. You wanna make a total of 20 of these and we'll be pressing to the left. And next we're gonna sew five of these units together, pressing everything to the left. Then we're gonna add one more of our charm squares to the end. And lastly, we're gonna sew one five inch by nine and a half inch fabric B rectangle to both ends of this row. We'll end up with a total of four of these units. And again, I'm gonna fold them all together and label them so that I don't get them mixed up with the other rows. Next, we're gonna assemble our section C rows. So we're gonna take one charm square and one 14 inch rectangle and sew that together. We're gonna to need a total of six of these and we're gonna to press to the right. Then we'll take three of them and sew them all together into one long row, just like our past rows. Next, we're going to take one of our charm squares and sew it on the end of this section C row. And lastly, we're gonna finish it off with two fabric B five inch rectangles. And remember, we're pressing to the right for this entire row. And at the end, you're gonna end up with two of these section C rows. And again, I'm going to put them all together nicely with a label so I don't get them confused. Lastly is our section D unit. So we're gonna take two of our large 14 inch by 34 and a quarter inch rectangles and sew them together. We'll end up with a total of two of these units. At the end of assembly, you should have your A, B, C, and D units. And there's my cat Pepper that wanted to be in frame. But now we are going to assemble our quilt top together. And we're going to go in the order of row A, row B, row C, and then row B. So we are going to make two of these. Now I'm gonna show you how to nest seams. So remember we had those special pressing instructions, one row to the right, one row to the left. That ends up making these seams fit together perfectly like a puzzle piece. So you'll butt them up right next to each other and then it will form perfect lines on your quilt or at least <laughs> as close to perfect as we can be. So I am going to pin each of these intersections just to make sure that my quilt is lining up as accurate as possible. So I'm gonna go all the way down this row. So the seams are all nested and I'll end up with perfect lines. This is what the finished piece will look like and you can press these larger pieces however you want to. We'll end up with two identical pieces and you can see that X pattern really starting to form or diamonds <laughs> as this quilt is called. And we are going to sew these together, again, pinning and nesting those seams. So this is what the big piece will look like. And lastly, you'll want to add on your last row, which is a section A row. You'll sew this onto the bottom. And the last step is sewing on the top and bottom of the quilt top. And these are those large section D rows that we made out of the background fabric. So you'll sew one to the top and one to the bottom to finish off your quilt top. And this is what the final quilt looks like. If you wanna see more pre-cut quilt patterns, please subscribe to my channel. And remember, you can download the free pattern in the description below. See you next time.